Huh? Four. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, basically, basically what we're going to be doing in this example um, is graphing each one of these separately. And these are just going to be like graphing the linear inequalities. Um, they're just going to be the same. So the easiest thing I would say to do is be to write each one of these in slope-intercept form. So here, I subtracted 2x. I have negative y is greater than negative 2x plus 1. Divide by negative 1. y is greater than 2x minus 1. Didn't you have to flip the sign? Oh, I didn't flip it. Thank you. Multiply, divide by a negative number, flip the sign, right? Thank you. So we do the first one. You guys don't need me to go as detailed as I did in the first test over there showing graphing, right? Go down to negative 1. Slope, 2 over 1. Up 2 over 1. Now we look at the inequality symbol. It's less than, so therefore it's going to be a dashed line, right? Okay. The next thing we want to do is determine the shading. So we choose a test point that's not on the line. The best test point to pick that's not on the line would be 0, 0. Um, put it in, you can put it in the table. That is false, right? So therefore, my test point was false. So I'm not going to shade towards my test point. I'm going to shade away. Now, rather than, when I'm doing systems of inequalities, rather than always shading every single one, I like to just put arrows first and then shade at the end. OK? I'll show you why. The next one. Here we got to set, we got to rewrite this one in a slope intercept form. So to do that, just subtract x. So I have y is greater than or equal to negative x plus 3. Remember that has a 1 over 1, right? So we go my y intercept 3, 1, 2, 3. And my slope is negative 1 over 1, so I'm going to go down 1 over 1. Remember this is greater than or equal to, so that's a solid line. Now, unlike systems of equations, we're not concerned about where exactly they intersect. We're concerned about the shading. So again, I need to use the test point, because there's going to be more than one solution when inequalities. So I test 0. 0 is greater than or equal to 3. Again, that's false. So for this one, since that point is false, I'm going to shade above. Yes? Now, on the last one, um, I have y is greater than 1. Well, y is greater than 1 is a horizontal line when y is always equal to 1. So that's going to be a dashed line. And again, if you choose a test point, choose 0. There's no x coordinate, but you can plug 0 in for y. And again, that is false. So you're going to shade above. So what I want you guys to see is Above this line, above that line, above that line, the only area where it's true for all of them is this area right here. So that's going to be my feasible region. If you guys were to graph all of these, which is fine, you can graph them all as they are, what you guys would see, though, is that, see where this intersection is happening? So you can just count, you know, if you want to graph them all, it's fine. But you can obviously see this is what's going to be true for all of the inequalities. Right? OK. So here, only one is true for only one inequality. Here, it's true for two inequalities. Here, it's true for all three of them. And that's all you guys got to do.